All right, so it is always exciting and doesn't happen as often as I would like when I can get our Shetlands on the Carter. So here we are, we have got a batch of our white Shetlands. So this is cream puff, sweet pea, and oats. This is all their wool going into the Carter. Um, I have one more Alexis, but she's still got, this is her yearling fleece that we just took off. So I will process that one separately. So we're going to hit the play button and let's get rolling. You can see it coming out. It's carting up. I was so happy with these fleeces, like I've said, um, that I'm thrilled with how the fiber is turning out after I wash it and how it's turning out coming out of the carter. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So if you want some natural colored white Shetland from our babies, this is the time to get it. It probably won't last too crazy long, especially if I run away with it. So there it is. Onward. Hi everyone, welcome back, or welcome for the first time. I am Kim Beegler, I'm the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I am sitting here in the mill today, and it's a little bit warmer, but before I forget, if you are new, thank you so much for joining me. I talk a lot about wool, I own a wool mill, I've got fiber animals, we are farmers, all of those things. Um, if you're coming back, thank you. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, I think this is episode 65, that's what I'm going with. And something funny that came up, uh, last mill day, one of my friends, Wendy was leaving and we were talking about the vlog and she, and, and she mentioned watching it on her TV. And I was like, what? Because only recently did it occur to me, I could put YouTube on my TV in my craft room so that I could watch other people's vlogs while I am knitting and stuff. And then I was like, whoa, they're so big. And then I was like, oh, do people watch me that big? That is terrifying. And Wendy confirmed, oh my God, yes, I have you on my... Like, so anybody watching, I'm just saying maybe you should just stick to your phone when you're watching me because it's terrifying for me to think. I always think you're, everybody's watching on their phone. That's a perfect size. Anyway, funny, funny. Anyway, thank you for coming back. Um, before I forget, also thank you for all those of you who purchased my, this last round of Let's Make Yarn or the first round, whatever it may be, of Let's Make Yarn, my online course. Uh, this Sunday is the first Zoom where we get together and see where everybody is at. So I'm excited. I've kind of gotten a few emails here and there from people saying hi and learning about what kind of wheel they have and where they're at. So um, thank you all. I'm so excited to see you on Sunday. Um, and guess what guys, a coming soon. Here's a coming soon. Cause this is probably the thing I have been asked most about. And so I'm going to make it happen. Hopefully it will be out. I'm going to say by the end of April, I'm going to do a mini course that will be up and available for purchase all the time. Once I get it up, um, on learning to spin long draw. Um, I have so many people, especially because that's primarily what I spin and it's what I, um, spin most of the time when I'm showing videos on Instagram and stuff. So I've gotten a lot of feedback on, could I, or am I going to teach a course on that? And I am going to, um, in the online course that I currently have, I teach short forward because I just think it is a little bit easier. It already feels a bit out of control when you learn to hand spin. So the more control you have over that fiber and drafting, I think it just makes learning a little bit easier. And also you really practice drafting. Um, so anyway, in the mini course, I'm just going to focus on long draw. It will be for people that basically have already learned to spin, but are looking to spin long draw or learning to work on their long draw. So Anyway, coming soon. Other coming soon, I'm going to be finally, I am breaking down and doing Patreon. I have been all over the place about whether to do this. Do I have to do it that way? Part of it is like, it's another app that I need to pay for or another app that is going to take money from me. And you all, owning a small business is not, in, I mean, it's a, it's a lot. 
um, just all the technology that you're constantly trying to piece together and being charged for, it all adds up very quickly. Um, anyway, I'm biting the bullet because I think as a platform, it will be the easiest thing to use. So hopefully April 1st, that will be available. I'll have a couple different tiers um, so you can get in on a bigger community if you want in my world. Um, and I just love meeting you all. I love meeting you all and chatting with you all as much as I can. I try to stay up on it. So anyway, that's kind of what is coming up for me and, and youthful. Okay, you guys. So I showed you in the first intro, the Shetland. So run, don't walk. If you want some of that Shetland, um, I feel like I have a fair amount of it, but it probably won't last that long. So I just thought I'd show it to you. This is literally as fresh off of the Carter as it can possibly get. It is white. It is beautiful. It is natural color. No, I will not be dying any of it. It will all stay. I've decided um, just with the Shetland, I'm just leaving it because also if you want to do any sort of color work, guess what? Grab it as the different colors come out. So here's our white. Um, it's next to skin. If you are spinning where you can, you know what I mean, basically it's a next to skin fiber. Basically what I'm trying to say is you can make any fiber, not next to skin. If you twist it too much, which as beginning spinners, we all do. So don't worry if you're a beginner, but, um, it's a lovely fiber. Here it is. It's in the online shop. Now go, I haven't put it up on Instagram yet. So you all are the first ones other than my newsletter people to know. So, um, that is up and I'm excited. I'm going to slowly work through. I just cleaned the Carter yesterday. Um, I'll throw some pictures in here of what you can, you can see how much fiber I get off when I am cleaning it. So I just cleaned it so that I could turn back to white. There's going to be the occasional dark fiber and piece of dark fiber in here. And of course the occasional VM, but it's, it's really, really light. Um, I'm not great about, I'm like, just get the sheep out shear them, move on to the next one. In theory, you would start with the white sheep and then move to the darker sheep so that the colors don't contaminate. It's fine. That's how I feel about it. So there's going to be maybe the occasional little black fiber in there. I think we'll all survive. That's how I feel about it anyway. Um, on shearing day, I just want to get it done and I don't want it to be, I don't want to be trying to color coordinate. I just want to get it done basically. So, okay. So that's there before I forgot. I want to talk about that. I have to tell you about some of the things I am working on because I didn't knit like almost, I'm going to say for almost six months last year, at, at, probably at least six months. And then I kind of slowly started picking things up. Partially, I was trying to let my elbows, hands, wrists kind of relax because I do so much repetitive between the mill, between spinning, all the things I do. Um, and then it just felt good to put it down. Like the pressure was off. Oh my gosh. I don't even have to think about knitting. Then I picked up my needles, I think towards the end of last year, and now I can't seem to stop. Um, and I'm spinning still, but I am knitting up a storm. I like my ideal night is I sit down and I spin for a little bit with a cocktail and then I pick up a knitting project. So usually each night I try to spin a little bit and knit on one or two projects. Then the next night I spin a little bit knit on one or two of the other projects because yes, I have four very active projects going. So let me show you because the first one is a funny, funny story I shared with um, some of my fiber club people the other day when we had our zoom. Um, so I'm working on my nurtured sweater by Andrea Mowry. This is a nurtured. I'm using 100% Shetland hand spun. Hopefully you can see there's a lot of texture to it. It's absolutely beautiful fiber. This actually isn't my fiber. Um, this is from a different farm up north, but they have beautiful fiber. Here it is. It's very textured. It takes a lot of yarn. You guys have seen this. I showed this a bit ago. So what's funny is I kept saying, I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn. I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn. Then as I kept knitting, it was like, I'm definitely not going to have enough yarn. I had plans A and plans B. I had already taken one sleeve because you knit this bottom up on the sleeves then you knit the body bottom up so there's no room really for like oh i ran out of yarn because you're already you can't make it longer when you're knitting from the bottom up so here's my first sleeve which i bound off per directions um two to three inches shorter i decided okay i'll do a three-quarter sleeve try to save some yarn there bound it off started on my second sleeve which i'm just obsessed with the texture of this pattern um, it does take a lot of yarn though. Um, started on the second sleeve, got about to here. 
was doing a little stash diving for another project. You guys, I found two whole extra skeins of hand spun, of this hand spun that I probably spun up months and months and months ago and stuck into a bag after I soaked it and then forgot about it. And I kept thinking, I swear I should have more yarn because what happens is I take the wheel I was spinning this sweater quantity for I, is my wheel I kind of take places. It's my, my travel wheel. So mill day, things like that, I have it at the mill. So I keep that fiber with it. And then as I would, the point is, as my friend Sandy asked, what did you learn? Kim, what did you learn from that? And I was like, uh, I need to organize my life basically so badly. But here's the plan I came up with as she was asking me is from now on, as I spin the yarn, ply it, finish it, I am going to stick it in a bag in the basket next to that wheel. It's all going to stay together because anyway, long and short of the story is I have plenty of yarn for the sweater. So now I am going to go back. Once I finish this second sleeve, I'm going to go back, rip back, pick up um, my stitches and knit another two to three inches so that I have Andrea Mowry has nice long sleeves on a lot of her sweaters. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna do it the way I want because I do like the option for like rolling sleeves and stuff. So it has a happy ending, that story it does. And I have plenty of yarn, so yay. Okay, there's project number one. Project number two, I blame this one on my husband. I think I showed you guys that I had picked this up. So this is the Onkers um, Summer Sweater Petite Knits. I know it's backwards. It'll be in the show notes and everything. It is, I'm using Sestari's cotton. Sestari is a wool mill in Virginia. I've mentioned it before. Um, we carry their cotton yarn. I carry their cotton yarn, I should say, we. Um, because, I mean, it's nice to be able to knit things that are off season. So I had put this down last year when I stopped knitting. I think it was the last thing I had knit on before I said, I just need to take a break. Um, here it is. So I picked it up. We're back on. I love it. It's going to be, it's a short sleeve top. I think I, I didn't, probably didn't show you well enough, but it is a short sleeve top, 100% cotton, can wear it during the summer. It's in blue, which is my color. Um, and I was about one row from the, from the yoke being done. And then it was time, it was gonna be time to separate the sleeves. <sighs> you know what, sometimes there are just times in a pattern, you know, we all have them, most of us, not all of us. Some of us are, uh, just knit one thing at a time. I can't remember what that's called. Anyway, monogamous knitters or crocheters or whatever we're doing. But, um, you know, there's like a point where you just are like, oh, I'm going to have to count. I'm going to have to do that, that, and that. And then you put it down. I was one row and then it was time to separate for the sleeves. So anyway, here we are. We have got my sleeves on. I'm just knitting the body now. It's where we're at. So I do really like this yarn. Obviously it's not the same as knitting with wool. It doesn't have that same stretch when you knit with cotton, but I'm not having a difficult time with it as far as my hands and stuff. Of course, I'm not knitting on it for hours and hours. So I kind of rotate through all of my projects. Okay, next one is, oh gosh, why can I never remember this? I have this pattern in shop. So if anybody loves it and they're coming in the shop, they can get it. And I'll put it in the notes, of course. But here is the big long shawl, or it's actually, I think they call it a scarf. I would call it a very long cowl. Anyway, so you knit with long color, then you're going back and forth and it makes this texture, which is amazing. And then you knit out the rest of it in the second color. Join, pick up 17,000 stitches on one side and do a little edging and then you pick up the 17,000 <laughs> stitches on the other side and do the trim. Um, so this is actually making really good progress. I just need to knit, 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 and then um, start picking up stitches. And um, that's gonna be a lot of stitches to pick up, but that's okay. Process, it's all about the process. Um, but I do, the colors are making me so very happy. And this is hand spun, thin wool. And this is, um, I think it's Donegal yarn from Ireland, but it's um, not Irish wool. I believe it's merino and silk and something like that. But anyway, it's lovely yarn. Okay, 
So we're making progress on that, and that's just like knit, knit, knit. So I love that too. That and that summer top are just knit, knit, knit. So great projects for on the go. Okay, you guys, this is my like. <laughs> so I've mentioned that I took a course fairly recently. Oops, sorry if I'm, okay. Sorry, my microphone, I, I thought I had lost it. I was like, if I just recorded all of that and my microphone was stuffed into my sweater, making a mess. Okay, so I have taken, I took recently a course with, well, I don't know when I took it, last year, end of last year, with Elizabeth Williamson. She is a Shetland native, Shetland Islands, and um, she grew up surrounded with Shetland wool, Shetland hand spinning, Shetland knitting. She is a knitwear designer and she focuses on Shetland lace. Like that's all she knits is Shetland lace. So I took one course with her. Then I decided to take another course with her because I can't stop. And don't worry, I have like one or two more that I'm going to take with her without a doubt. Um, so currently the one I'm doing is to knit a scarf and it has different sections of Shetland lace in different colors. You could do it all in one color, but she has it in different colors. So here's one section, here's one, and they all have different lace patterns in them. And as you progress, the patterns get a little bit more detailed with the lace work. She also taught us a join because um, lot, most of Shetland knitting is garter stitch, hurrah, hurrah. Very little purling, but there is some purling, she is clear, but not a lot of purling. So she taught us a join for garter stitch because you will need to do a join. Anyway, let me show you. I can't, I can't stop with this one. So here we are. And it's fun. My husband's like, oh my gosh, the holes are so different now. Okay, the holes are a lot more prominent because these are double yarn overs in this white. Um, but obviously when you use any sort of a, a color or a darker, it's not going to show up. And of course I'm sitting on. Anyway, it will be more prominent, the lace on the bottom once it gets blocked out, which is a whole thing. But here's where we are. So this is obviously the second, I'm working on the second section. I decided to use hand spun. Um, which Elizabeth was excited about because um, Shetland wool history is hand spinning as well as knitting. So um, this bottom one is a Romney blend and you can see it has all sorts of different, it is very um, Jameson of Shetland like um, as far as in the mixed color. So it's a Romney, I think it had some silk and some random other things in it. This second one I'm using, and I literally was diving through my stash. Like, let me try to find yarns that are similar in weight, um, and in different colors. So the second one that I'm doing is a Texel cross that was in Fiber Club last year, I think maybe the year before. It is like the most pure white wool that I've seen in a long time. I, don't know that my Shetland would be quite this pure white even. It is like white as white as white. So anyway, that's this next section. I just finished the last chunk of lace section for this. I'll do knit for a couple rows and then move on to the rest of it is actually going to be two different shades of natural colored grays. And then I'm going to end it. There's a big band on the very top middle of the, it's a scarf. And I'm gonna end it hopefully with this leftover fin from the project I'm working on now. Um, that's my plan. And so basically you, and the pattern is on, um, the pattern for this scarf, if you want to dive into it, is My Shetland Home by Elizabeth Williamson. I will put it in the show notes. It is on Ravelry, so you can do it. Um, but you basically knit up the four different lace sections. There's a larger section that is basically your middle of your scarf that you do a much more detail that definitely gets more intense on that um, section as far as the lace work. Then you do half of the scarf again or a little bit less than half and you join. And she also has this fun, so here you can see where the colors, where I switch colors, but you can't tell on the other side that we switched colors there. There's no indication. So anyway, some really fun things to learn. Um, we learned that join, she's got some great courses. So if you have interest, go to her website. I'll put a link in the show notes. My Shetland home is um, where, that's the name of the pattern, if you want to dive into it. And I am loving it. And she is very into like, you can do lace, Shetland lace without using lace weight yarn. And in fact, to start with, it's easier. I don't know, I am just loving the lace portion of it. 
um, just the process of it. And, and she really focuses on reading, learning to read your knitting as you go along so that um, for the obvious reasons, you can see where you're making mistakes before you get further along. Um, anyway, great and fun. So fun, fun to hear her stories, all that stuff. So that's what I've been working on, plus hand spinning. Okay, making sure my microphone's good. Um, I was just gonna do a quick little farm update. I didn't take you to see the animals. If I have any fun clips, I will throw them in at the end. I have a couple mail videos, so I will throw those in at the end. And actually, well, I'll talk about it in a sec. Um, farm update, really, it's sunny for like four days. So what that means is that Mitch, my husband, he's, we are grass seed farmers first and foremost. It's, um, so he, this is the time of year when it starts to get a little warmer and the sun comes out and it's dry, they rush out and start fertilizing the grass seed fields, the grass fields that will then produce seed and then we collect the seed. So if you're new and you haven't, don't know what I'm doing here, <laughs> that's why I live here is because we're grass seed farmers. So this time of year, they gear up for fertilizing. All the farmers are out trying to get fertilizer on. The rain's supposed to come. So they probably won't fertilize for a couple days and then they jump back in when it's dry again. So, um, but you basically need the temperatures to get into the fifties for the grass to decide to start actively growing again. It's been a very tough winter here for us um, as far as grass growing, which is most likely fine for the grass fields. The grass just goes dormant when it's really cold. For animals and their pasture, it has been a real shit show, how's that? Um, because the grass isn't growing. Usually the grass grows very, very slowly during the winter, but this year, no grass growing because it's just been so cold which means that all of our pastures have been worked to the bones and we're having to hay a lot more this year, which as you can imagine, then we're buying hay um, and it adds up quickly. So um, anyway, always fun when I can get their product into the mill and turn it around and they can start helping pay for some of their hay costs. Cause oh my gosh, you guys have seen videos of my sheep. They do not mess around when they want to be fed. So, um, and they, there is stuff for them to eat. It's just not anything spectacular and not enough. So we supplement. Uh, anyway, that's kind of what's going on between the two farms. Um, yeah, gearing up, gearing up for what will be a harvest season come in the next few months. So um, that's what's going on there. That was quick. And I need to get out to the hazelnuts because those of you that have been watching a while, we did plant our first hazelnut trees. So maybe I'll pop over there, maybe before the next time. Um, there might be some little buds coming in since the weather is turning here a little bit. And you can see what the trees look like coming into their first, well, their first full year really of being planted. So I'll pop over there soon. Okay, mill stuff. I showed you the Shetland, you saw the video. I do have a video that is for Fiber Club. Oh my goodness. This is so lovely. So quick fun story on this. If you're in Fiber Club, you know it, but there is some of this, not a ton, but there is some of this left in the online shop. It was March's Fiber Club. It's a Shropshire blend. So Shropshire wool, which I got from a local 4-H uh, girl. Her mom emailed and said, do you have any interest in it? So I went and looked at it. It was short because they were shearing twice a year, um, but I decided to take it anyway. And it was probably at most two inches. Um, so what I ended up doing was stash diving through all my raw wool and finding a fiber that would blend out well with it because I also didn't have a lot of it. There were three fleeces, but they're short. So not a ton of fiber there. So this ends up being about a 60% shrop blend with a merino wool cross and a Rommeldale CVM wool cross. So you have about 60% shrop, which is a down breed, and you have about 40% Rommeldale merino crosses, which are on the finer end. So it's beautiful. Um, the shrop was white. One of the fleeces was uh, almost black. It was basically black. And the other fleece was, I'm trying to think what the other fleece was brown, I think. At any rate, it's stunning. There is a little bit of this. It should spin up next to skin. It's going to be very bouncy because of the shrop. 
um, and that down springiness. And then it's going to have the addition of those lovely fine wools in there. So you can jump in there and grab that. I do have a giveaway, which is going to be, I think what it's going to be, it's a great question. Actually, if it's yarn, I'm going to dive into the youthful. I think it's going to be, and I don't have it with me, but I can tell you what it is. I have one skein, one skein of our Jacob mill spun yarn here left from last year's batch. And so I think for the giveaway winner that wants yarn, it will be that. For the giveaway winner who wants fiber, I'm not sure what fiber it will be, but it will be lovely fiber. Um, so jump on, comment below. You know what, how about if you comment when spring hits, do you keep wooling? Do you wool on or are you, uh, I don't wanna say fair weather wooler because that sounds negative, but um, when it gets warm, do you stop with the wool and you move to gardening or whatever else it may be that is more of a spring slash summer? I'm just curious. I tend to just wool all year round, obviously, <laughs> um, but lots of people don't and I totally get that too. So comment below or comment about anything you want to comment about, whatever, whatever. Um, okay. Let's jump to, I have a couple just videos as I am making fiber club, I believe. I'm also, I just finished up yarn club, but I'm going to save all that video, um, which I got some great video, um, for yarn club and I'll save it for the next vlog since they're just hitting the mail. Okay. I will see you all in a minute. Okay. So we're getting ready to card fiber club. And I'm gonna show you. So this is some CVM, like BFL. I can't remember what it is, but it's definitely uh, Rommeldale CVM and it's crossed with some other stuff too, but it's, uh, on, it's definitely on the fine side. Then over here we have got, this is a Merino cross. I can't remember exactly well else what is in there. And you can see it's um, the tips are a little bit sun bleached there, but it's a fine wool. And then here's what the fiber that inspired this is completely off the wall. This is Shropshire. So, or Shropshire probably is how I would say it. So you can see that this is pretty short. Um, these fibers are maybe two inches at best, um, because they are pretty springy and I'll show you some, um, not in this video, but I got this fiber from 4-H, a uh, 4-H person, and I wanted to use it in Fiber Club, but didn't quite have enough of it. And because it's a little bit shorter. Anyway, I'm going to tell you all this probably in the video. So I'll just show you me picking it just so you can kind of see, I'm going to put you on the tripod here, how it goes when I pick it. And um, basically it's uh, at least 50% shrop. And then the other 50% is these other two fleeces that I had. I'm going to turn this on. So I'm just, and the shop is really short. Doesn't need much help going through the picker. The other fibers, there's a fair amount of bits of EM in there because 4-H, they are not, uh, they're not striving for the perfect wool here. They were striving more for the perfect stock so that they can show the animals and they look good. Um, it's also why it's shorter because they were shearing more often to be able to have the sheep looking its best before uh, the high schooler showed it. I think she's in high school. So I'm still picking some stuff. A lot of it will drop out on the floor and through the carter. So that's why most of it is tiny, tiny particulates and it's going to drop out as um, it goes through the process. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this and because this is finer, I'm going to do a better job of opening it up because I want the picker to not, I don't want it to get caught up on the teeth of the picker, which are a little bit uh, tough basically. So I really try to like separate it out and open it up quite a bit so that the picker can open it in a more gentle fashion. I could just uh, do this and blend it over at the carding machine, but what I did was I ran a test batch to make sure the picker wasn't gonna be too tough for it and the fiber was going through just fine. So I said, okay, it's much easier to do it this way because I'll help it 
I'll pick it a little bit myself and then the um, Carter can finish the job. Same goes with this. You can see how squished up this fiber is really, really densely packed in there. And I just don't want it to get too abused as it goes through the picker. So I am just opening it up quite a bit. Um, and then the picker can open it up the rest of the way. And then it's ready for the carter. You can see how lightly I'm running it too through the picker because I just want to treat it kindly. So now I'll just go back and do the next layer of shrop and back and forth until I'm done. And let me get this lined out and then I'll let you guys see kind of what it looks like when it comes out the other end. Um, so here it is coming out. It blends it all up nicely for me there. And then here it is actually already conditioned and ready to go onto the carter, which is where we will go next. It looks beautiful. It's carting up beautifully. I'm really happy with this hodgepodge that I came up with and it's spinning perfect. Okay, see you guys over at the Carter. Okay, here we are with Fiber Club on the Carter and I'm so happy with how it is turning out. I'm going to hit the play button and you should be able to hear me just fine, hopefully. Famous last words. Uh, so, here we are. Um, I am running this pretty lightly. I am only running about three ounces per feed, which probably sounds like a lot. Uh, sorry, I'm weighing out some more, but I'm running it a little thinner because there's so much fine wool in here uh, and I don't want the machine to be too rough on it, basically. So it is carding up better than I could have expected. A little bit extra BM in there, but that's a little kind of to be expected when you get a 4H fleece. So let's go over and we will check out. It's actually in need of me to push down very soon and we're going to go over the edge here. So I'll let you. If I don't catch it fast enough and it. Um, backs up what will happen is it will get caught up in the roller the roller will pick up again and then it starts to roll on itself on itself on itself and if you don't catch it it is such a nightmare to sorry guys i'm trying to um, do two things at once it's a big nightmare to have to pull all the fiber out if you let that happen so i try to be mindful and i have a mirror above the carter that i can kind of watch if i'm at the other end um so that i can see so there it is beautiful beautiful all right see you guys in a minute okay you all i think i covered it and i hope you enjoyed those videos and it makes you want to run to grab some of this um it's hard for me not to take it home. It's so hard, but I'm really trying to be mindful about what I take home. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope wherever you are, you're getting a little bit of slightly warmer weather, or if you're in the opposite of us, you're getting slightly cooler weather because you're probably done with the weather. But wherever you are, I hope that you are doing well, that you stay healthy until I see you next time, that you are kind to your neighbors, kind to everybody. That's the best we can do, right? And make lots of pretty things. And if you haven't, please subscribe below. Let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing here, even if it's weird and super niche and, and we talk about a lot of wool. Um, and don't forget to comment and like below as well because YouTube loves those things. So let's make YouTube happy, right? Okay, you guys, thank you so much and take care until I see you again.